Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I do want to say thank you again to my SOS family, and thank you to Phil, and especially Karen, for all of the work that went into this week. Uh, can we give them all a big round of applause? Karen, stand up. You worked so hard. Karen, everybody. Very nice, very nice. Sorry to embarrass you, but we appreciate you, Karen. All right, so because we had a speaker cancellation, Phil, that means I can speak for two hours, right? Uh, uh. All right, well, how about this? How about this? Let's make a deal. If you all laugh at my dad jokes, then we'll keep it to an hour. Is that a deal? Okay, let's try it out. You ready? I, there you go. That's the spirit. You're getting into it. You're getting warmed up. That's good. Keep it going. So during the course of this talk, I'm going to tell some dad jokes. I'm not going to tell you when they will happen, but it will be apparent. That was stolen from my good friend and hero, Mr. David Bianco, who told that right up here just a couple of years ago. So thank you, David. All right. Y'all just keep that energy up. We're going to have some fun for the next hour, okay? So, of course, again, I want to say thank you to my SOS family for all of the work over the last 12 months that led up to this day. Greatly appreciate it. And as Phil mentioned earlier, we do want to say thank you to the Rural Technology Fund, and I think one of the talks this morning also mentioned them. They're doing just tremendous work in getting technology into rural areas. And this is something that I am personally passionate about. When I was growing up, I lived on a little bitty dirt road. My address was Rural, to, rural Route 2, Box 52A, right? So I was not in the city. I was on a little dirt road, and if it weren't for technology, right, who knows where I would be. So I'm passionate about this, and as Phil mentioned, we take all of the proceeds from our book sales, and yes, we've sold more than five, but we take all of the proceeds of those book sales and we donate them to the Rural Technology Fund, and I'm pleased to announce that this year, in addition to that donation, we're going above and beyond with an additional $10,000 for the Rural Technology Fund. So thank you to all of the, you who have purchased books that have helped with that donation. And uh, we, you know, we greatly encourage you, uh, if you haven't already given your own personal donation to the RTF, please consider doing so. It's a very worthy cause. All right, now for something completely different. Are you ready? Who here has played golf? Well, that's not enough hands. We can count putt-putt, okay? That should be just about everybody, all right? Okay. So it is confession time. I would like to confess something to you all. I am not what you would call a great golfer. I'm not even an average golfer. In fact, I am a bad golfer. Bryant has seen me play. He knows. So I don't have the skill of Tiger Woods, and I certainly don't have the fashion sense of John Daly. <laughs> when I send tea time invitations to Happy Gilmore, he simply refuses them. And I can't even say na 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 like Chevy Chase in Caddyshack. Great movie, right? So, what did I do? I went out and bought some hardware. So I bought this Garmin launch monitor and I bought a practice net so that I can hit golf balls in my backyard because I ain't got time to go to the golf course or the driving range. I just need to be able to get out in my backyard and practice for 15 or 30 minutes. But here's the problem. When you're as bad as I am, even if you're only eight feet away from that net, some of your shots just totally miss the net altogether. So when you send a real golf ball flying over your fence towards your neighbor's house, you're having a bad day. So then I had to invest in like practice golf balls. 
so I wouldn't break windows. So I bought some hardware. Then I installed the software for the Garmin launch monitor. And what happened next absolutely terrified me. I saw my horrendous swing for the first time. It recorded me, I looked at the video, and I saw how bad my swing was. It's kind of like a cross between Charles Barkley, who's a great basketball player, but was a horrible golfer, and look like this guy. <laughs> I just love that. Like, I can watch that over and over and over again. It's hypnotic, isn't it? <laughs> so I figure, you know, Charles Barkley, that was his old swing. He eventually got fed up and, you know, he took some real lessons from a real pro and he got better. I figured if Charles Barkley can get better, well, hey, so can I. So, I studied those video recordings so that I could find my swing flaws and fix them. Then, I used the flight data to verify that those swing fixes were actually working. And guess what? I actually got better. Not a whole lot better, but, you know, better than I was. So now you all are sitting there saying, Doug, what in the world does this have to do with Security Onion? We're waiting. Well, I'm going somewhere with this. If you have the right hardware and the right software, and you respond correctly to the data they provide, you can improve your situation. This goes for not only golf, but hey, incident response, threat hunting, the kind of things that we do. So, the right hardware. If you're a blue teamer, you want a blue box, right? We've been selling enterprise appliances for a couple of years now. We sell rack mount 1U and 2U boxes that are custom tailored to run Security Onion and give, get you up and running as quickly as possible. We've got several different models available. And then last year, we announced our response ready line, right, for especially military folks who need to do emergency incident response, hop on a plane, put it in the overhead bin. So these things are portable, but incredibly powerful. Now, of course, lots of folks are moving to the cloud, so we've got the right hardware for the cloud as well. If you're in AWS, we do have an AMI. If you're in Azure, we have an image there as well. So that's the right hardware. What about the right software? Well, of course, you know, in terms of downloads, we are currently at, are you ready for this? 2,163,634. That's quite a few downloads. I'm impressed. So, how have we improved the software since last year? Well, we've been busy, so here we go. We added multi-factor authentication, so you make the, your software even more secure by requiring that MFA code from Google Auth or whatever provider you have. Now, there is a QR code there. That's my personal QR code. I would ask that you not scan my QR code, please, pretty please. I mean, you could scan it if you want to, but I would really recommend against it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like, you really, you probably should not scan that QR code. And if you do, you should, you should probably have your volume all the way down. But you probably shouldn't scan the QR code. You went for it. You went for it. Yes. Got him. <laughs> there it is. Well played, sir. All right. So MFA, we added MFA. Check the box. Next, we added case management directly in Security Onion Console, right? So you can go directly from alerts or from your hunting or from what have you. Create a case, escalate data to the case. Collaborate with your team as you work to close that case. As you're adding artifacts to the case, you create indicators, you can then analyze those using our built-in analyzers. So the team has been working incredibly hard on MFA cases, analyzers, and, oh by the way, we've talked about it a couple of times today, dashboards. Right, we originally had this thing called Hunt, which was really great, 
but we decided to take it up yet another notch, right? Because with Hunt, we could do an arbitrary group by on any old random field, and that was nice, right? But we want to be able to build an entire dashboard. We want to have multiple fields being visualized on the same page. So, you know, eventually this just came to be a, a priority, and I sat down and I built the proof of concept and shared it with the rest of the team. They gave me feedback on it. We iterated, finally turned it over to Jason Ertel, who's our uh, amazing vice president of software engineering, and he took all of my horrible code and replaced it with his good code, and then he came back and showed me his version, and I said, that's amazing. It's so much better than my version, and he's like, but I want to do one last thing to really, like, push it up over the top. And I said, well, you know, there's this thing called a sand key diagram, and they're really cool. We should add sand key diagrams. So Jason said, challenge accepted. Five hours later, we had sand key diagrams, because he's that amazing. And so, you know, we get lots of compliments on our sand key diagrams. To which we say, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> you knew it was coming, didn't you? <laughs> Who writes these things anyway? Oh, it's me. Make note to self, hire new writers. All right. We also added the intrusion detection honeypot. We talked about this previously. Uh, this is pretty amazing stuff. You can very quickly spin out new intrusion detection honeypot nodes to your enterprise, and then when an attacker gets on the inside of your enterprise and he starts scanning around, he'll find these strange looking IP addresses, and they might have like a web server sitting there, and he might connect and see something like this, and he might go, oh, that's interesting, and try to put in a username and password, and then that generates alerts, and you say, aha, I caught you. So that's pretty cool stuff. We also added a new receiver node type. This helps you to build a more scalable, more enterprise-y deployment. But we weren't th done then. We then improved the analyst workstation. Uh, it's now even more powerful. It works better in air gap environments. It joins into your distributed deployment, so it kind of understands the CA and the certificates and all that good stuff. We also updated to Elastic 8. This was a massive undertaking, uh, and uh, we made it, so it was well worth all the effort. Recently, we added an advanced toggle for alerts and cases. Right? So inside of Security Onion Console, we have the Alerts app, and we have the Cases app, and both of those have kind of a simplified interface by default. But we said, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you had kind of that additional power at your fingertips to slice and dice all of this data. So if you need that, you just pop into options and you uh, click that toggle for temporarily enabling the advanced interface features and you're good to go. So our team has been working incredibly hard over the past year to bring you all of those amazing features. And oh, by the way, we talked about the right hardware before. You know, when folks buy our appliances or sign up for our Amazon AMI, whatever, all of those products then help us to support and maintain the software, right? So when you purchase appliances from us, you're helping to add new features to the software. And all of that sort of brings us to today. I'd like to announce that Security Onion 23170 drops right now, and that's going to include Zeek 409, Elastic 841, and as uh, our, the gentleman spoke about earlier, some improved dashboard and hunting for Sysmon data, right? So great job, guys, on that. Phil talked about the book at Amazon, so you can actually scratch out that top headline there. You don't have to wait till next week. You can actually order it right now, and it will be delivered to your door next week. So just go to securityonion.net slash book. You can order your copy. Your purchase will be a part of next year's RTF donation. And that book does include a discount code for our online training and also 
the SOCP certification. So go and get a book. You get a discount code for the certification. You pass the certification exam, and then you too can say, I'm a Security Onion certified professional. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> but of course, there is always one last thing. So if you've ever been on a golf course and you hear four, you know that they're trying to tell you, heads up, something is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, something is coming. Security Onion 2.4! <laughs> Version 2.4 is in development now. It builds on the success of 2.3. It's easier to install, configure, and maintain. It's more powerful, but at the same time, it's more streamlined. So let's talk about the specs. Our ISO image is going to be based on Rocky Linux 9. We're moving up in the world. We're going to also support Ubuntu 2204. Our distributed deployments are going to use Elastic Clustering. And we are going to support the Elastic Agent. There you go. We'll talk more about that in a minute. I think you're going to like it. And SOC includes even more features. This is where things get fun. All right, so in Security Onion Console, we have this thing called the grid. Previously in the grid, you could open this thing up and you would see the node status and you'd see appliance images if you bought the appliances from us. Now you're going to see container status, right? So instead of having to drop to a command line and run sudo so hyphen status, you just pop into grid and there it is, right? If a container is running, it'll let you know. If not, then it lets you know about that as well. Now, in addition to that, you'll also see kind of in the lower left of the node status panel, there's a little icon there. And let's see, can I zoom in? It says view node metrics. So if you click on this, we might actually see this in a demo in a few minutes if you're interested. But if you click on that link, it actually takes you directly to Grafana, directly to the Grafana dashboard for that particular node. Right? So if you've got 10, 100 nodes, it makes it a whole lot easier to get from grid over to Grafana to see what services failed or the history of that particular service. Now, next up in terms of improvements to Security Onion Console, we have the users page. Traditionally, you could go to this page, you could see your list of users, but we took it up another notch. So now you can edit users, so you can go in and change username, password, roles, things like that. You can lock the user account, you can delete the user account, you can add new users, everything you would expect to do in a user management panel. We also have a new page called Grid Members. The idea here is that if you have a distributed deployment, you got a manager, some search nodes, some forward nodes, maybe at some point you need to decommission a node, right? So you could go into Grid Members and you could click on the member, uh, click on the review button and then delete it. Uh, if you add a new member to your grid, it's gonna show up on the left side, maybe under Pending Members, and then you can click a button to accept that member into the grid. Right, so again, trying to get you away from the command line and help you to stay in the comfy web interface. So there's your grid member page where you can uh, delete a grid member if necessary. We also have a new page called Configuration. This is where things get really interesting, right? So instead of having to SSH into a box and fiddle around in config files, why not just do that from the web interface? Right, so you go into config, maybe you go to BPF and PCAP and you put in not port 443 and you click apply and you're done, right? It's as easy as that. There's also a button so you can synchronize your grid and that essentially tells SALT to update all of the states on the box and so that makes it a lot easier, again, to stay away from the command line. Now let's talk about Elastic Agent. 
This is going to be our recommended agent. It's going to give you comprehensive telemetry and also live response capabilities. We will have a dedicated elastic agent node option and it will run Logstash so that you won't have to expose Elasticsearch to all of your endpoints, right? If you think about it, you might want to maybe have laptops out on the internet and so maybe you want a node sitting in your DMZ to collect logs from those agents. Well, you don't necessarily want Elasticsearch sitting out there, so let's do Logstash and so we'll have all of that in an easy to use configuration option for you. We've even taken it to the next level and built a custom agent wrapper that takes that native agent and makes it even easier to deploy. So when you go into Kibana, you would then be able to run a live query. And if you'll notice, we've got a little thing down here that says view and SO hunt. So when you get the results of that and you click that link, that takes you right into hunt, shows you the results of that. So you could, kind of like what Bryant was talking about earlier, search for a particular MD5 across all of your endpoints. You get the, the results of that live query right in hunt, right in just a few seconds. We talked about uh, documentation earlier and we're gonna make that integration even better, especially for folks in air-gapped environments. Uh, if you are in an air gap environment today, you may have noticed that we do have a copy of the documentation built into Security Onion console, but it's kind of a simplified version of the documentation. So instead of multiple pages, it's really just a single HTML page. It's a little bit awkward today. So we're fixing all that, right? We're gonna give you a full version of the documentation built into Security Onion console, uh, the full multi-page version. And the search functionality will actually work for AirGap users. It doesn't work today, but it will in the next version. And in addition to that, when you're in Security Onion Console, like in that uh, nice new configuration app that we just looked at, there will be specific pages that will have a blue question mark, and if you click on that, it will take you directly to the documentation for that particular functionality. And so this is what the search looks like, even on an AirGap network. Search is gonna work great for that internal documentation. So let's talk about the transition from 2.3 to 2.4. When we release 2.4, we will announce an end of life date for 2.3. And 2.3 will continue to receive security patches and priority bug fixes until it reaches that end of life date. So now the question on your minds is, when can we try Security Onion 2.4? Well, you know, we're the kind of people that we like to under-promise and over-deliver. So the beta is coming soon. We're not gonna give you a date just yet, but it's coming soon, okay? So get ready. When it does drop, we'd ask that you try it out, right? Kick the tires, let us know how it goes, give us feedback. The more feedback we get during beta, the quicker we can get the final release out the door, right? So. We want to get there as quickly as possible, so we are asking for your feedback. So, would you like to see a demo? Are you sure? Because this is like pre-alpha stuff, folks. It could break. It could, it could die in a fire. Yes, that's what David wants to see. Burn it to the ground. All right, well, well listen, if the demo burns, I'm holding you all responsible, okay? This is your fault. <laughs> all right, so here's Security Onion 2.4.0. So we do have our normal alerts page, as you've come to love. You can do all your cool stuff here. You can drill into alerts. You can acknowledge alerts. You can escalate alerts to cases. You can pivot to full packet capture. You can correlate an alert and that takes you over to hunt and that gives you all the logs that are correlated to that particular alert. So that's good stuff. We still have dashboards. We love our dashboards, especially our Sankey diagrams. That's gonna continue to be a thing in 2.4. So all that stuff works the same way that you expect it to. Hunt still works the same way. Cases, you can still create cases, add artifacts to cases, take those indicators and run analyzers on them, do what you need to do, close the case. 
Full packet capture is still the same. Grid is where it gets cool. This is where the changes are. So if I drill into this particular node, here I can see my container status. You can see these things are running. They've been up for a while now. And then this button is what we talked about earlier. So this is for viewing the node metrics. So imagine if I had 10 sensors, 100 sensors, you know, I, I might have just one out of them that was showing a fault or some kind of an error. So I drill this, I drill into that, and I click that button, and that would take me over to my Grafana page, like that. And now I can use that Grafana information to diagnose what caused that fault in the first place. All right, so now we go down to administration. We can go into users. We can drill into a user. We can change username, first name, last name. We can change their roles. We could lock the user account just like that. We could delete the user account just like that. We can go to grid members. If we were adding a new member to this distributed deployment, it would show up under pending. I could then click accept and it would move over to the accepted member side. Once it's there, I can click review and I can see the name, the role, the fingerprint. Uh, and if I need to, I can click delete and remove it from the grid. Then we have configuration. And this is where lots of good stuff is. Our guys have been working really, really hard on this particular feature. So you could drill into BPF, you could go to PCAP, you could put in not port 443, you can apply that to your grid. And you can change the configuration for things like Elasticsearch, Grafana, IDS tools, that's where you tune your rule set. PCAP, Suricata, Zeek, Security Onion Console itself, right? So here's where you can drill in and modify your login banner or your overview page, things like that. So again, keeping you away from the command line keeping you in a nice, comfy web interface for all of your administration needs. All right, so now let's go over to OS Query Manager and put in my super secret credentials. All right, so let's do a new live query So all I need to do is select my agents. Now I can start running queries. So maybe I'll zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Select star from users. Now if I just submit that, so it's gonna send that query out to any agents that are connected. Of course, I only have one agent, but you see the results come back that fast. So now I have to do, if I want to, if I really have a large data set here and I want to do a lot of slicing and dicing and maybe some arbitrary stacking of random fields, maybe I want to click this link to bring all that data into Hunt and now I've got all the capability that I need to maybe drill into this and maybe say, well, let's group by host architecture. All right, so when we do that, we get a new addition to the table there for host architecture. And it's just that easy, right? So you can instantly run queries against all of your agents. You're gonna have agents on your distributed deployment itself, all the nodes in the deployment. You might add agents to your endpoints as well, to your laptops, to your desktops, to your server infrastructure. And now you've got one place to do all of your hunting, all of your live response. It's all together the way that you want it. Did my microphone go out? I think the battery may be dead. So amazing. So I think it's it's the house mic, right? Yeah, just unplug it and plug this in. Here. Yeah, there's a chance it could have died. Thank you. We good now? Yeah. All right. And let me show you the docs, since we talked about that. 
So for example, we can go into configuration. So these configuration options are going to have a blue question mark. You click that, it takes you to the documentation, built right in. And of course, you could do a search for BPF as well. And that works just like you would expect it to, even on air gap networks. So for our, our loved ones on air gap networks, we're looking out for you, right? We want you to have the best experience possible. So we're doing everything to give you a, a good experience while you defend our nation's networks. All right, that's it. Thank you all very much for coming. We hope you had fun today. We hope you learned something new. We hope that you'll stick around for B-Sides Augusta tomorrow, and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you all very much. Thank you.